Hi, I'm Dave Clark, and this is a video to show you how to properly change the bungees in a Piper Comanche. The process is identical for either the single engine or the twin. Before jumping into the repair, I want to tell you that a list of the tools and the parts needed, as well as a detailed instruction checklist, will be included at the end of the video where you can pause the action to examine them more closely. And these lists will all be posted on the ICS website where they can be downloaded. We have arrived at the hangar and the plane is up on wing jacks. The tail is appropriately tied down and the bungee access plates have been removed. To remove the old bungee, I use a large pair of metal snips. Looking up in the wing, we can see the cut bungee cord still in the outboard bungee bracket. Next, I grasp the remnants of the old bungee and use it to unscrew the outboard roller bracket. Before removing the inboard roller, I'll check to see if it moves freely and I'll pull on the bungee arm to see if it moves or makes any noise. Rather than try to show you how to inspect, lubricate, and reinstall the inboard roller while it's up inside the wing, I'm going to use a bungee arm that's been removed from the plane. Right off the bat, let me say that I have seen a lot of inboard rollers that are seized, that is, they won't turn, because the bolt has been over-tightened. If you take nothing else away from this part of the video, please do not over tighten this bolt. I've removed the quarter inch bolt and I want to show you the structure of the roller including the internal bushing and the relationship to the washers. The inboard roller has a steel bushing that's pressed in. It protrudes slightly on one side of the roller and it's flush on the other side. If this bushing is misformed due to over tightening or if the roller will not turn on the bolt, then it's going to have to be replaced. This particular bushing is no longer available in the parts manual. Thus, if you need to replace it, it will have to be an owner produced part and you'll have to get a machinist to make you one. Replacing the bushing is out of the scope of this video, so if you need to replace this bushing, you should go to Matt Kirkey's Comanche Gear website for instructions on that repair. Assuming that the bushing is okay and is turning properly on the bolt, you can put a small amount of Lubriplate Aero Grease onto the bolt and then reassemble the bungee arm. Normally there are only two washers that go on this bolt. There is no washer under the bolt head. The first washer is 5 16 and goes over the bushing. The second washer is just one quarter inch and it's for the bolt. There is one exception and that is if this bolt bottoms out before it captures the roller and prevents it from turning then you can either add another one quarter inch washer to the bolt or you can get yourself a slightly shorter bolt. This is a Piper engineering drawing from Matt Kirkey's website showing detail of the bushing and washers for the inboard bungee roller. Pause this video to study this drawing. One last thing. If you have to remove the bungee arm for any reason, or if it has become wobbly or it turns in an eccentric fashion, remove the arm from the plane and inspect it. In particular, Look for cracks in this area on the bungee arm. Replace the bungee arm if it's cracked or if it's not turning properly. Furthermore, if you find that on your aircraft you have a thin-walled bungee arm like this one, this is 1 16th inch thick wall, you need to replace it with a 1 8th inch or the thick-walled bungee arm. Now we are reinstalling the inboard bungee roller on the bungee arm. We tighten the bolt to where it captures the roller, then back off until the roller turns freely.
once we've cut the bungee cord uh, and removed the outboard roller bracket, we're going to need to take out the uh, cutter pin in order to get, uh, get this clevis out. Now we have removed the uh, cutter pin and so we can remove the clevis and we're going to clean it off with some solvent and then we're going to apply a thin coating of Lubriplate Aero Lithium Grease. When we reassemble this, we're going to put another bungee onto the bracket. Well, put the clevis in, flip it over, put a thin flat washer on the clevis and then a new cotter pin. This is the only washer that goes on this bracket. No washers in between the roller and the bracket. We want this roller to, it, to turn freely. Also, we can apply a thin coating of the uh, lithium grease to the threads of this bolt. Before I place the bungee onto the installer tool, I want to explain that this is a way to install a bungee and not the only one. I feel like it's the best one for me. I've used several bungee tools over the last 30 years and I've designed two of them. Both of these tools were an effort to address shortcomings in other tools. The attributes that I hope to achieve were safety, ease of use, and portability. Bungee tools in the past have been almost always two-piece tools. That is to say, they had a stretcher and an installer. Some of them use a three-foot breaker bar and a heavy vise, something with which I'm not all that comfortable. This also speaks to its lack of portability. And finally, almost all installer tools have been rigid and of fixed length, which frequently makes them difficult to remove from in between the freshly installed bungee cord. I have often seen mechanics use screwdrivers and pry bars to free the installer tool once the bungee is installed. My one-piece tool combines both the stretcher and the installer tool. It employs two jack screws, one a right-handed Acme threaded rod and the other a left. By turning the hex drive in the center of the tool, you can either expand or contract it. To expand the tool, we use an Alden wrench. That's a, an open-ended ratchet wrench. Once the bungee tool reaches its, its desired length, it can be placed into the bungee access slot in the wing and then used to screw the outboard roller into the nut plate in the rib. Once the bungee is transferred to the two rollers, this bungee tool can be collapsed very easily by using the Alden wrench at first and then with your fingers. That makes it very easy to remove the tool once it has served its purpose. Next I'm going to show you how to put the bungee onto the uh, installer tool. You'll put the um, outboard roller bracket into the nose saddle and then just hook the other end of the bungee over the lower rear saddle. Use a screwdriver and twist this like so and bring the other side of the bungee onto the tool. At that point, we would expand the bungee tool by using the Alden wrench on the hex drive. One thing I should, should tell you is that in the outboard roller bracket, the bolt is kind of free-floating and therefore it makes it very difficult to, to get that started into the nut plate in the rib. To make it easier, Folks have tried various ways to make this bolt hold still. Some people have take, 
uh, taken masking tape and uh, other uh, materials to do that. Uh, for a long time I used a piece of, of uh, heavy cord and stuffed it between the bolt head and the, and the, and the bungee. But more recently I have used a piece of uh, um, vinyl tubing that you can get in a hardware store. This is a 3 8 inch ID tubing. I've cut a slot in it and I just put this in between the bungee and the bolt head and stuff it in there pretty, pretty tight and it makes that bolt very rigid. I take a piece of cord, like some uh, sash cord, and I put it through there and uh, when I'm through screwing this into the nut plate, I can pull on that cord and pull this out. And at this point, we're going to expand the bungee tool to the proper length for the installation process. We're going to use the Alden wrench to expand the tool. The bungee tool is now expanded to 19 and a half inches and it's ready to install in the airplane. One thing I did ne neglect to mention was that a number of bungee tools in the past have had a fairly narrow front saddle. That means that this bracket has to sit fairly precariously on a narrow little shelf and when you're handling the bungee tool or especially when you're installing it in the wing if you hit against this bolt you can cock this bracket and in some cases just it will come off of the uh, the uh, front saddle with some force. So I made a special point of made, making my front saddle fairly wide so that that would not happen. For some mechanics, starting the bolt and the outboard roller bracket is the most difficult part of the repair, but it does not need to be. Before you insert the bungee tool, put your hand into the wing to orient yourself. Check out this photo for the spatial orientation of the nut plate with regard to the window in the rib. Some mechanics with smaller forearms can actually guide the bolt into the hole with their fingers. Now we're inserting the bungee tool to get the uh, bolt started into the nut plate. We're Here the bolt is started and we're screwing it into the nut plate. When the bolt can turn no further easily, turn the bungee tool counterclockwise one full turn and then turn it until the two halves of the bungee cord are parallel to the bungee arm. Here we're placing the inboard end of the bungee tool over the inboard roller. A little bit more, a little bit more, one more titch. Perfect. The inboard roller has now captured the bungee. Now we're shrinking the bungee tool with an Alden wrench. And here we are removing the bungee tool. After installing the bungee on the other gear, you'll need to do a gear extension test making sure that both the gear and the indicator system is working properly. Also, make certain that the landing gear is down and locked before removing the wing jacks and untying the tail. So why are we so concerned about the bungee cords? First of all, they are an integral part of the landing gear and have four functions. That is to say, they assist not only in keeping the gear down and locked upon gear extension, they also help in keeping the gear up and locked, as well as assisting in both extending and retracting the gear. So why the big landing gear AD? AD 77-13-21. This AD was issued because Comanches were having landing gear collapses and it was determined 
This was due to worn out or defective components in the landing gear system. This AD has three parts that concern us. The fourth one is about ferrying the airplane to a maintenance facility. Part A mandates that every 1,000 hours in service, the landing gear will be given a very thorough inspection and all parts that are worn below certain limits will be replaced. And now the one that is important to us in this video, Part B. It says that the bungee cords should be specifically addressed and be inspected for problems such as frayed protective covering, breaks, and soft areas then replace cords exhibiting these conditions. In addition, we must replace cords every 500 hours in service or every three years, whichever comes first. Part C is also important to us. It mandates that the bungees should be inspected at every annual inspection and replaced if they are found to have the problems mentioned in Part B. In the past, some mechanics have interpreted this AD as saying that if the bungees are going to be replaced at 500 hours or three years, then they do not need to be inspected at every annual. That is not what this AD says. Finally, with regard to the landing gear AD, we need to mention that it is incumbent upon the aircraft owner to make certain that compliance with the landing gear AD is recorded correctly. Far too many times we see logbook entries that read nothing more than AD 77-13-21 complied with. This is grossly insufficient. We've included some examples of how to record this AD properly. Pause your video recorder in order to read this page. Here are some frequently asked questions about bungees. You can pause your video player in order to read them. As promised, here is the detailed instruction checklist and also the parts list. You can pause this video player at any time to read the material. You can also download a PDF copy of this on the ICS website. To read this disclaimer, pause your video player one last time.